I just want to say it's r- incredibly impressive how quickly you pulled out a Kingdom Hearts song out of your ass. What? You mean yeah. the best song from Kingdom Hearts that will move you emotionally as soon as you hear that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all you got to hear is Yutada Hikara just start doing that. And you're just like, I'm in. I'm in. Let's go. Hey, guys. Kevin Cole here. Uh, in the next three minutes, there is a big spoiler, I think, for Kingdom Hearts 2. So uh, if you haven't played that 15-year-old game yet um, and you still want to keep things fresh for yourself, maybe uh, skip forward three minutes. That said, uh, it's Kingdom Hearts, so I can't really tell if it's parody or if there's actually a spoiler. So uh, good luck. Have fun. Bye. This guy, Kingdom Hearts. Goofy's, a, Goofy's, a, Goofy's got a shield. Let's go. Goofy dies. No, no, he doesn't. I didn't know no, that. No, he doesn't. Goofy died in Kingdom Hearts. No, he doesn't. Not two or what? Not one or two. I haven't played three yet. What? Not one or two. Yeah, he totally dies. It, look, I'll just type into YouTube. Goofy dies. You're gonna pull up a Goofy kill count Hold on. video. Yeah, I'm googling Goofy, Goofy dies. Kill, Goofy kill seven. <laughs> Goofy <laughs> kill seven. <laughs> Goofy, Goofy dies. Di- uh, dies no, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, here we go. Kingdom Hearts three. Here it is. But he doesn't die in two. Uh, yeah, this. Goofy dies. G- Kingdom Hearts two HD. Goofy dies. All right, quick, right now, sing up, sing up your podcast with us. Kingdom Hearts two HD. Goofy dies. Uh, seventy nine thousand views. Jump to 12 seconds right now. Go. Okay, 12 seconds. Hold okay. on. We're, I'm, uh-huh. at, I'm at 12. Now we're, now we're at 15. You... Now we're at 16. Oh, wait. Uh, you're playing? Bob, Chad's, yeah. <laughs> Chad's playing fast with Lewis over there. Hold on, fighting. real quick. I, I just got to say, I didn't go into any videos, but I Googled Goofy Dies. And in the people also searched for Donald Duck Dead, Jafar Death, Stitch Death, Snow White Death, <laughs> Mufasa Death. Hold on, guys. Walt Disney. Kills ten. I, I. There's a video. The, he's no. There's not a video called Walt Disney Kills Ted. Walt Disney kills every creation he's made. Uh. Okay. Mm. Look. Uh. Why don't we jump? Chad, you need. We can't watch this whole video. So why don't you go ahead and jump to uh, a minute and ten seconds? Okay. Minute ten seconds. All right. To watch Goofy die. Here it is. Ready? Go- uh, Goofy's looking at a battlefield as nobodies. The uh, small minion creatures attack him, and they're coming to Mickey. Goofy sacrifices himself. See? Goofy dies. He pushes oh! Mickey out of the way. He got hit there with a rock. A rock's coming. A random rock's coming. We just fought Se- Sephiroth, but we're fine. Goofy died. Goofy dies, but then he, but then he's not dead in the rest of the game. So when does this resolve? No, he's dead. He's dead. It's a ghost. No, this. What? Chad, what? everything you know except for that song. You know everything about that song. Simple. And Did clean, I block but... out this part where Goofy dies in two? Goofy's dead. Deal with it. Canon. Guys, knowing Kingdom Hearts, this is probably like a forgotten memory that Sora is experiencing inside an egg machine to remind him who he is. It's probably not even true. Hmm, it sounds a little familiar. It sounds a little familiar that that kind of that kind of logic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's a dream within a dream. It sounds like someone's. Yeah. It sounds like you've been in, living in the basement of RL's mind. <laughs> I felt I felt the segue just like hard pulling the car out of the ditch, just like leaning leaning into it. You know just what? To get us out you know. Of there. You know when they talk about what would happen if your body went through a black hole. And there would be a point where every atom of your body was the same distance apart, pulled away, like stretched out, and you were not a complete being anymore. That was the segue. That was the feeling of that segue that we pulled through that black hole of conversation that we just were having at the start of this <laughs> podcast. Uh, that, it, was a, it was a job well done. Welcome to Goosebuds. Yeah, Hello. Goosebuds 76. Uh I live in the basement. That's what it's called, right? I it, 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 I live in the basement. I live and, in your uh, basement. I live in your I live in your basement, your basement. guys. It's more scary because it's okay. our basement that it's we ours. own. Mm-hmm. We have property ownership of this of this domestic uh, house that uh, uh, monsters in. Goosebuds seventy six. I live in your basement. Parentheses. I dreamed a sour dream. <laughs> I gotta say, scariest title for a Goosebumps book. Sure. I. Uh... What's scarier? Give me a scarier one. Uh, I, I'll believe Why it. I'm afraid of bees. That's Scary. It. What's that about? What could that be? It's, it's open and honest. I'll say this. Has nothing to do with me. Don't care. Um, mm, I okay. would say I'm just quickly scanning across titles, trying to think of a better one. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I guess like... Look, bees are scary. Uh, Dom's right. Bees are very scary, but it has nothing to do with me. Make it personal and I'm scared. That's all. 
I, I think don't go to sleep is kind of scary only because like mm. I had a hard time staying awake and like, yeah, I, I probably would. Go see, to sleep. see, that's scary. Talking about me. It's telling me not to go to sleep. That's scary. Mm, so it's about putting it on yourself. If it's about me, I'm scared. Mm. Uh, it, I have a little bit of a bee tangent that I have to just bring up to you guys. Sure. Yeah. You got some bee stuff to say? Hey, bees, most 90s conversation point. It's one of them. Mm. Well, that's why I'm bringing. That's exactly why I'm bringing it oh, up. And I've talked about it before. Killer bees. Yes. I even talked about the made-for-TV movie my family watched about killer bees. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, it's killer bees is really funny because if killer bees, like if that news story was like put out today, mm-hmm. it would just be a meme, right? Right. Right. We would all take it and be like, "Wow, what a funny, stupid idea." Uh-huh. Here's the meme: a million memes about killer bees. Mm-hmm. Fucking boomers were like, "Shit's real." I don't like getting stung, and I'm going to get stung to death. I better fucking care about this. <laughs> I better be scared about this and make my children fear it. Yes. Are we just talking about the, just the period of time in the 90s where bees were scary? When killer, when killer beans were so on the swarm that the Wu-Tang Clan made a song about it. Killer bees. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a whole brand sub, uh, subgenre of, yeah. the, uh, of the Wu of universe. The yeah. yeah, the mm. Wu-universe. I respect the woo. I would argue that the peak of Scary Bees is uh, My Girl. Oh, yes. Definitely, Chad. I think that was the end point of Scary Bees. Yeah. End that point, really yeah, for, for that character. Yeah. Well, you might fall in I love think... with a girl and, and kiss someone. You're about to kiss a girl, and then, like, bees just get you because you're out in the woods. Yeah, how, how, did, well, no, wait, how does that movie go? It goes, he wants to, he's, he's falling in love with a girl. The movie's yeah. called My Girl. It's his girl. And he wants to kiss the girl, but he wants to practice on bees first. Yeah, he tries to kiss. Yeah. His, as many bees as he can i think someone so that was dumb again like talking about the internet pre-internet uh that was when he couldn't google can i kiss a bee to find out mm-hmm. that that was dangerous mm-hmm. you know and that's yeah what, and that's that's the dangers of the pre-internet era well that's what he that's the thing he's he get, he he kisses a bee and it stings his lip and he's like his lips all swells up and he goes oh man i must have kissed the boy bee i need to kiss a girl <laughs> bee where are the gr- oh the queen bee and he so go, he goes yes. to a fucking nest mm. Yeah, and he knocks. And he, just, he knocks on the door. <laughs> yeah, and they don't. And they don't answer, which is strange for bees. So he just puts his mouth on the bottom and just starts sucking like the bottom of an ice cream cone. <laughs> he puts his lips in in the hive and goes hello. <laughs> 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 and then and that's how he. That's how he. That's how his death begins. What a great movie. Yeah, my girl. I got a pitch for you. It's called My Girl. Remember that song? A boy is gonna get stung to death. Don't tell the children. It's a, it's a, <laughs> we're gonna fuck them up. All I remember is I think she kisses his corpse or something at the end. I think so. Yeah, and bees come out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a candy man. I don't know if, if people didn't didn't know that Ari Aster actually directed My Girl, and that was one of his. That's, <laughs> that's the scene where he got to truly stretch his directorial. Legs, you know, he really got yeah, the yeah. Out. wigs, wigs. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, if, so I live in your basement is what we're talking so, about today. Yeah. If you've never listened to Goosebuds, hi, I'm Chad. Uh, guys, I'm yourselves. Paul. I'm Paul. Uh, yeah. If you've never listened to Goosebuds, uh, interesting episode to start on seventy six. <laughs> not, not how I would do it, but hey, welcome. I'm done. We're gonna cover cover books today, and obviously, our title is "I Live in Your Basement." Um, like Paul said, the scariest title he, he would say ever of Goosebumps. I just think anyone that's tell that's talking to me, you really that's when RL is really he's he's appealing to to the my baser instincts, which is my fear of my own death. <laughs> I don't care if someone else is afraid of bees. That's all I'm saying. Okay, all right, mm-hmm, sure. Mm-hmm, I'm fair. just you're looking mm-hmm. out for a number number Paul. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm a greedy uh, bastard. That's all. <laughs> looking out for numero polio um mm-hmm. yeah i mean let's compare it to another goosebumps title mm-hmm. uh stay out of the basement yeah I don't, I don't okay care. sure a warning Safety. Oh, okay yeah oh, okay i will i live in your basement i oh. don't get a warning no. it's just happening the terror it actually is might happening. be an invitation to come down it might be like hey i'm living in your basement why don't you come down and meet your neighbor i got I, I have an snes you want to come play it uh, uh, this is getting better. <laughs> I live in your basement and I have video games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's- I live but- in your basement and I'm playing your video games. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So here's a- <laughs> I've deleted your save files. Oh, no. <laughs> that now we're getting terror into terror territory. Yeah. Terror yeah. territory. Terror territory. Your Mario 64 save file with all the stars unlocked and you would have Yoshi up on top of the castle. Yeah, I, I erased it. I started. Oh, through. you slug in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true territory right there. So here's the thing. This is 
so we jumped ahead. We usually we go through and we go in order, but we've been letting our Patreon supporters and they're lawless. They don't want to do anything. They, they, we tell them. <laughs> they go, they go on their own whims, and we have to adhere to them because they keep us alive. Uh, mm-hmm. They asked us to do the <laughs> second to the last book. This is the second to the last. Is book. This is the second to the last book. I had no idea when I was reading it. In the main Goosebumps like continuum there's 62 of them this is number 61 and guys Jesus. it shows in the story that this is the <laughs> second to last this is the senioritis book of goosebumps yeah well also i mean uh rl stein uh didn't tell anyone but he was dying at the time that he wrote this book so like well he just kind of drones on and then yeah. he died like the next week yeah but then he came back to life somehow when <laughs> he, uh, he two- faked his death Y2K happened, and we all thought that the world was going to fall apart, but what really happened was a lightning bolt strike uh, hit right where R.L. Stein's grave was and brought him back to life. That was Y2K. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> wild 2K, you know wild what I'm saying? 2K. Uh, so let's let's say, Paul, uh, this is Paul. This is R.L.'s one of his last words and testaments before Y2K took him. Mm-hmm. Before brought him back, before Y2K. Oh, sorry, brought him back. Uh, one of the books that R.L. definitely wrote himself. He de- definitely didn't have a ghostwriter write the first draft, and then a- another ghostwriter wrote the second draft, and another ghostwriter completed it. That didn't happen. R.L. wrote this one beginning to add every sour word. I believe that. I believe that of this one. You want to know why? Because I think... I think this one was just a freewheeling Bob Dylan, uh, the seat of his pants writing experience. Because this one is fucking crazy, and I could barely, you can barely keep track of what's happening. The characters change before your eyes in this book. <laughs> uh, maybe it's because uh, it's a deep metaphor for, I believe this book starts off with head trauma, correct? This is absolutely about head this, I mean, this, I, this I mean, book do we is come about clean, head. Chad? Do we come clean here? What's that? Do we come clean and say Paul's the only one who read the book? <laughs> I read the first half of the book and ran out of time. I'm so sorry, Goosebud people. Goosebud people, I have to tell you, I tried as hard as hell to read this book, <laughs> but I didn't. I'm really sad, actually, that you guys. <laughs> I, I, I'm really, I'm really sad that you guys didn't read this book because Dom, I, I really wish you had read this book. I think Dom, you would have appreciated some of the terror imagery in this book was some of the best that RL has written. Well, so here's full disclosure. Full yeah. That's not what you were saying earlier. Yeah, you were saying this book was a piece of garbage. No, 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 no. I was saying this book is incoherent, which is possible. This book is a Lynchian nightmare. Okay, <laughs> hold, on, hold on. A sidebar real quick. Somebody needs to sample Paul saying, no, 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 no. Like, that is such a good sample that it needs yeah. to be in a, a fucking dance song. Kevin, so, okay. Kevin, Kevin, cut out the no, 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 no. And please... Pre- Provide it for us. We'll give it to our Patreon supporters. I'm sure somebody makes music, and they will make a sample of me, a dance mix. Well, Paul, can you give two more sound bites just for people to play with? Right. Uh, either uh, other ways to say no. Okay. Uh, no, uh, no, chat. No, 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 no. Here, I got it. You I guys each do one. <laughs> no, 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 Dom did it. No, I did do it on instinct. <laughs> it must be the theme of the episode. Chad, you need to say something about the system being overloaded or a meltdown. You should say it in like kind of like a, a, a you know, a security system voice. Sure. And okay, I'll say right. um I'll say something. I'll th- you Paul, you think of something for I, me I, to say. I have something for you. Okay, all right, all right, sure. I'll I'll go with it. Are you ready? The system is at max critical. <laughs> okay that's good and then if combined with no 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 like i'm really liking our song that somebody else is gonna make all right what am i gonna say Paul? hold on so i think dom what i wanted you to do was um uh which i'm gonna call it who invented enigma um uh <laughs> who invented enigma yeah the fucking the british guy who saved us from world war ii because he broke the code of the of the oh Nazis. i was thinking this song i can't uh, i can't remember <laughs> his name for some oh reason. yeah i thought we were thinking of the song too. alan turing uh, yeah yes. you're thinking yeah. alan, alan turing. turing yeah so i feel like like i just i've been listening to a lot of what's his name uh dom that that guy that who has the song about uh vietnam the guy who has the song about you know, are you, are you my me? dad right now, Paul? No, 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 describing no. media. Hold on, what's his name? Dom, you sent me his. Uh, uh, Paul Hardcastle has that song about Vietnam. Uh, it's called um, uh, 
I forget what it's called. You know what I'm talking about, Dom. Paul Hardcastle. Well, I haven't listened to that song. I just listened to that first. That one track. Okay, well, it's album on Album of Bangers he, he from has, Paul Hardcastle. That's the, it's on that album, and he has this song, and it's about. So he has things like what we're talking about. No, 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 no. And the system is crashing. You have noises like that, but then you have to have some like <laughs> weird historical facts. So I think you should have a line, Dom, that's like Alan Turing was born on June tw- June 23rd, 1912. And if you say oh, that, I should just read a re- read some Wikipedia for a minute. Yeah, yeah, just read like a little bit of Wikipedia. Okay. Well, wait, here, what's the Wikipedia article we should bring up? I like Alan Turing. I feel like it fits. I with don't our like theme. Alan Turing. <laughs> Let's do a different one. I, <laughs> not I that I like dis, how... not that I dislike <laughs> Alan Turing. We're just that was the sample. That was the sample topic. Give me one. You got to pull it out of your back about, pocket. You how, didn't even about, know it was in about, there. I'm gonna pitch a different one. How about you go have a different one? Let's make it more sci-fi. Okay, Dom, can you say something about how like we're going down a wormhole? Okay, we're doing wormhole. Wiki. Wikipedia, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. This is happening. Man. If you started Wormhole. with episode seventy-six of Goosebuds and you're experiencing, oh god, this. every episode we get somehow less and less e- easier to jump into the show. It's yeah. a, it's fascinating. You think we would have gotten better at this? No, not at all. Uh, for a simplified notion of a wormhole, space can be visualized as a two-dimensional surface. No, this is bad. Uh, we're going to do another one. <laughs> Wait, I think no, this is bad is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Learn, no, this is bad. Uh, okay. What, what, we got it. We have, I think we have enough samples in there. I think we got it. A yeah. wormhole could connect extremely long distances, such as bi- a billion light years or more. Okay, we have it. We All right, it. make the we song. We're good. That's enough. Uh, give it to Diplo, and it'll be a fucking great song. I think that this episode is the Lynchian Nightmare. It's the most Lynchian Nightmare-esque episode, uh, or sorry, book, of the Goosebumps series. Not that... I don't know that it's good, but I think that it was crazy. And I read the whole book, and guys, he he keeps you on your toes. That's for sure. RL keeps you, <laughs> keeps you guessing through this whole book. And, and you finish the book, and you don't even know what happened. And I got to commend him for that. Hmm. Um. Int- interesting. Well, let's chat. How? Okay. Let's. Okay. Let, you want to walk through this? We'll. We'll start going through the story. And yeah. Then, and, let's lay out the. Let's lay out the evidence. Okay. Um, okay. And and get it. So, I live in your basement. Let's go through the story. We need to go through the plot here. Chad, I'd love to hear what you made it up to. You can let me know when you dropped off when you were like run, <laughs> when you ran out of time. Because yeah, I want to know when because it gets it flips it flips it flops it goes all over the place. Who knows what's happening I, in this book? I must have fallen off before that, that happened. I just kept kind of rereading the first part over and over did again, he not, honestly. Did he not wake up for you at all from the dream? Was there, There's a dream? What are they? There are. The this book? this is vanilla sky, baby. This is layers upon. This is inception. It's layers of dreams. Okay. All right. Let's lay down the, the foundation, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Uh, we, we follow a boy, Marco, maybe our first Hispanic character uh, in the entire Christmas. <laughs> sure. We can go with that. Yeah. Yeah, that feels right. I feel like I haven't picked up a non-white uh, boy uh, Anglo-Saxon name this entire series. Yeah, that's uh, fair. <laughs> and uh, where do we start off with? It's Marco is uh, got a super oppressive mom, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he just like he just wants to play baseball because this is the '90s and all kids uh, ever dream about is the Sandlot and wanting to yeah, man. hit the ball super hard. And the Bash Brothers were big. You know, it was a hot time to be in the baseball. The Bash Brothers were big. You're right. Mm-hmm. It was just a, people were just really into knocking balls far yeah. uh, over the fence. Mm-hmm. Dingers. Dingers. <laughs> Full, great American dingers, you know? Uh, so Marco is like, well, I still want to play baseball, but my mom won't let me because, listen, she's probably Munchausen me. Uh, oh, I so- thought, Chad, I thought the, about Munchausen situa- or syndrome so many times during this. I was I was like, that's going to be the twist. This mom, But I was like, Here's the thing. I was like, would would RL besmirch a parent that badly? A parent can be aloof. A parent can be busy. But will a parent be evil in a RL book? Huh. Who knows? Uh, I'm trying to think. Other than them accidentally being turned into a monster, no. And even then, they're usually pretty nice. Yeah, I don't think they'll ever be evil. Yeah, so this is probably... I'm not, I'm not sure what this mom's deal was, because also, I've, uh, it wasn't baseball. It was softball, right? It was softball, well, yeah. It, it was, was like, softball, it yeah. Was softball, yeah. I don't want to disparage softball. It's a very tough sport, and it and people could throw the ball very fast. I feel mm. like injuries in softball are even less common somehow than baseball. Maybe I'm wrong. I have no idea. If you had to ask me, or maybe because the ball's bigger. I don't know. Maybe it hits more heads. But she's like, you can't go play softball. So he sneaks out. Uh, was it during the night? No, to- it was during the day. <laughs> midday. Okay, so it's just a strange, like, in the middle of the day. What did she want him to he be gets, doing? He gets home from school early because of a, a teacher's meeting. 
and his mom forgot because his mom's aloof and he gets he's he realizes he's home alone and rather than j and o like a normal kid <laughs> <laughs> he gets out you beat your parents baseball. home from work you get you start j and o yeah you gotta take advantage of that free time no he goes he goes out to play <laughs> to play softball uh and and he just takes a real big, uh, what do you call a softball? What's a cool name? Uh, a, a white beaner. Nope, that's not a good name for it. Uh, a white, a, a, a white, a white, a white oh orb, a white orb, right to the head. He takes uh, a baseball bat to the head, Chad. I I forgot most of this. He gets he gets the okay. biggest. Chad the big... read a quarter of the book. <laughs> yeah, I read a quarter of the book. Paul will explain the book. He goes down to the field. He sees Gwynny Evans, the biggest. Toughest girl in school. She's all proud of her of her ability to to, to hit a dinger, and uh, she's gonna pick teams. He runs up to her because he wants to tell her that he's gonna be on the team. He wants to win her over, so she'll pick him. She she's swinging two bats. She's warming up, and she accidentally <laughs> hits him in the head with the baseball bat, knocking Marco out. And he comes to at home with his mom saying, "I told you so. You did it. You weren't supposed to be playing baseball." And then she walks away and leaves him with his uh, his head injury, which is really fucked up. And she just goes into the kitchen and cleans up dishes. <laughs> yeah, she well, she put him right back into the game. She was like, if you, you know, you're awake, you're going back in. Yeah, you got to get in the game. This is this is the NFL protocol for concussions. Um, Yeah, they they they, they uh, uh, go on, Paul. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. She, yeah, she, she's pushing him to get that baseball scholarship for sure. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, she's multiple times letting him fall asleep, which is like the worst thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. you're not supposed to do that after a concussion, right? Because no. you can fall asleep forever and die. Yes, absolutely. Uh, or in this case, uh, continually wake up into a new nightmare every every uh, ten or so chapters. So what happens in this book <laughs> is is he's laying there. His mom leaves him after his uh, his head literally gets smacked in with a baseball bat and he receives a creepy lynchian phone call from a boy named keith who says you're going to take care of me marco you're going to do everything i say because i live in your basement creepy fucking creepy mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's a that's a legitimately scary thing i do have to yeah i do have to say i love the setup that he gets hit in the head he wakes up in his bed and then he receives a phone call that seems to have nothing to do with the rest of the book uh, the, it's, to this point and through their whole book almost nothing to do with the book so wow it it's crazy so that happens yes lynchian scary call mom is taking care of him uh she comes back got some food for him or something or a drink or some shit and she says, oh, what's what's wrong? What are you so upset about? He's like, mom, this boy called named Keith. And she's like, oh, no, your friend Jeremy called earlier, and I told him you weren't available. And he goes, no, he, call, he, he called the phone right next to me, and you didn't answer, so I picked it up. And she goes, but Marco, there is no phone in this room. <laughs> Fucking chapter chapter break right there. W the Westworld. Westworlded. <laughs> Wait till next week for more information. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a terrifying moment. It's truly scary, and and it's one of the better cliffhanger endings to a chapter that i think rl has written sure because there's an actual scary threat but also he if i uh quote unquote recall slash i didn't get much farther than this mm -hmm. uh, uh chad if you didn't if, go you down, did, if you didn't make it much further than this you only read about two chapters of this book i okay fine i know i didn't read very much but i'm very sorry hey i was sorry. honest okay you lied you committed a sin i goosed up guys i you goosed, goosed up <laughs> and i, I I goosed I'm, up big I'm, time. I'm I'm gonna go to the Barnes and Noble <laughs> in the mall and pray to the Goosebumps kiosk and be like, please forgive me, RL. Pray to our Stein God. Yes, ask for that forgiveness, <laughs> Chad. Well, my uh, thank you for 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 that future forgiveness. Um, my my question is, he doesn't go down to the basement to check, right? He just like. Well, he, he can't. Just, he can't because he's bedridden at this point. But I. But like, yeah. It, it, I'm just telling you. Even if if you got called, right? I'm asking mm -hmm. this question more for mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. If you're you're living in your uh, in your bed, you're all tucked up in your jammies, and you're watching Big Bad Beetleborgs, and you get a call saying, "Hey, I live in your basement. Mm -hmm. Take care of me." Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you'd go downstairs and check, right? Like you would. You would get up. Well, yeah, first but, the pee would come out. Let's be yes. honest. Yeah. Sure. Uh -huh. Yes. And then uh, no. Well, I, I. And then here's a question for you, Chad and Paul, mm -hmm. the writer. Isn't it more interesting to go ahead and say I'll wait until nighttime when my mom's asleep, and then I'll stagger out of bed, you yes. know, driven by you know 
curiosity trying to figure out what this what this thing is that called me and mm-hmm. having this sequence where you're coming down the stairs you're having to hold down onto the banister real tight you shouldn't be out of bed but you got to know what's in the basement when you're cause because you're drunk on your swollen cerebrum mm-hmm. while hobbling <laughs> down those stairs yeah you're drunk on blade brain fluids that shouldn't be going because you got <laughs> smacked around that's scary yeah well t- Tom, I got a surprise for you. That happens later, uh, and we'll get to that. So okay, well, d- Paul, please take yeah, please so, please take us away. So he wakes up the next morning. He's feeling way better. Marco's feeling great. He goes down to have his favorite cereal combo: Frosted Flakes X Corn Pops. I think that's crazy. You got to put if you're gonna mix two cereals together, one of them's got to be chocolate. Am I right, boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always yes, totally agree. You always do a mm-hmm. a, a sweet base like a raisin bran mm-hmm, or something, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then some cocoa crispies. Yes. Yeah, it's it's interesting that he wanted two different types of sugar corn. Yeah. This, <laughs> you know what? At this point, November 19, 1997, when this book was written, Big Corn was in full effect. Oh, yeah. Big Corn mm, was counting big... the dollars. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I would assume, if anything, it's just a sign of his head injury. He's just pouring that... random boxes into a bowl. Chad, I'm with you right there. I think that was a sign of his deep illness that he had inside of his brain was his poor choice of of cereal mix yeah because he's pouring all the cereals into one bowl and then he just starts like licking all the doorknobs mm-hmm, or whatever right mm-hmm. it's just like it's, it's random it's like he's his head is injured and yeah. he needs a doctor now i don't know if this is the head injury or if this is the cur- the quirky character rl was trying to write or what the hell's going on because again this story is insane uh the mom <laughs> says don't don't have hot stuff. You'll you'll burn your tongue skin off. And she says you can't eat <laughs> eggs because you the whites are inedible and your stomach can't handle it. She starts saying crazy shit like that. And she'd like, be an anti vaxxer. She's she'd definitely one hundred percent an anti vaxxer. Yeah. This mom, without a doubt. And she starts saying crazy shit like that. I don't know what the I don't know how to make anything of this mom's mindset. She's insane. But Marco, he make he survives the day on in Saturday. Uh, and he starts playing pool down in the basement. Dom, he goes down to the basement. He looks around for Keith. No sign of Keith. But what they do find in the basement as they're playing pool, a scary squirrel gets out. Now, guys, I'm going to tie this back into my <laughs> most recent real-life events that happened to me. I walked downstairs the other morning, and my cat had a mouse in her mouth. I thought she had a toy mouse in her mouth. Then she threw it oh, on the ground, and it started to run. And I got, yes. No. It was a real mouse. And I got to say, live animal in your house, terrifying. Again, RL, point to you. Very scary moment that they have to try and capture this rabid squirrel that's r- running around in, in their basement. They get it out. <laughs> Everything's okay. We had a squirrel get into the house a couple times. We used to have a chimney in our house, uh-huh, and squirrels uh-huh. would get in the chimney. Also, one time, a squirrel was just holding onto the screen of our window, and it would not move. It would not leave. And we had to call Animal Protection to come and remove the squirrel from our screen. <laughs> Tom, how did they get rid of it? Oh, wait. Okay. I have to do a real sidebar here, because I remembered a story from my childhood this week that really fucking freaked me out, and it has to do with animals. Do you Let's remember hear it. Go. Yeah, go. go. I, when I was a kid, I guess my parents had uh, repotted uh, the yard where they have like the squares of grass with yeah. the soil. They sod it up. Sod it, sod that shit up. And so my parents had done that, but I guess like a groundhog had you know burrowed his way back out and was like hey what's going on around here you know like there used to be dirt now it's freaking grass Uh but the thing is is that what had happened was that the whole square of dirt was on top of the groundhog's back and the groundhog (laughs) was walking around as if it was still underground with this sod on its back like the whole square had come up so like i I was like a kid and i was just playing outside and i saw a square of grass just walking around it freaked me out i was like i was like whoa the grass is walking like and i was i was a little i must have been like five or something yeah but sure. like, yeah, my like the neighbor came by and like picked it up with a shovel and just like put it in the neighbor's yard or something <laughs> like that. But like, it was freaking me out, and and I remembered it this week, and uh, yeah, that's, I don't know. True I just, that's true horror, Dom. That's true horror. It was real horror. It stayed with me, and that's what I'm yeah, saying. I get that. I'm saying the horror of an animal uh, in a place that an animal's not sp- supposed to be, like under a piece of sod in your backyard, walking toward you, terrifying. So again. 
RL. Do we give RL some points for this scare? I think it's a legit scare. Paul, I think yeah. you love this book. It's a good book so far. I'm telling you, this book's got some stuff going on in it, guys. So he, he, they get the squirrel out, whatever. He goes back to school. Everyone's <laughs> treating him weird. Everyone's saying, oh, Marco, are you okay? Are you okay, Marco? You you know, like you got, a, you got smacked in the head with a baseball bat. You know, everyone's appropriately worried. You got worried. smacked in the head with the freaking baseball bat, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're appropriately worried about Marco and his freaking head. So the teacher even brings him up in front of class and – uh, I think this was a, a little bit of a selfish move by the teacher, but their teacher brings them up, says, Marco, we're learning about uh, about uh, health care for some reason. Uh, <laughs> in fourth Did they grade. even have health care in the 90s? Was that I don't a thing? know. No, yeah. it was, you could just get healed back then before we monetized it. <laughs> you had a fruitopia and everything went away. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the killer bees came along, and then we needed to get the healthcare system to deal with all the bees. Mm-hmm. Things that- uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so he calls him up, and he was like, "You, it's time to talk about your recent injury." <laughs> yeah, he talk about your recent injury and what the hospital was like. Marco can't remember being in the hospital. He, he swears he wasn't in the hospital. He, we just woke up at home, and they, they, don't worry, you'll be fine. You're gonna, you know, you'll remember it one day. It's just your memory's just a little messed up, but you know, he goes home, tells his mom about it. Uh, on the way home, he sees uh, uh, what's her name again? Uh, Gwynny. This is a crazy name, Gwynny. Uh, definitely a white chick. Uh, she's chasing <laughs> after him. She's chasing after him with a baseball bat, like a crazy, a crazy. <laughs> His worst monster. nightmare because because that's she just hit him before, right? Was she the girl before with the two yeah, bats? Yeah, that is the yes. same girl that hit him. He thinks she's gonna hit him again. He runs away. He he runs away yeah. scared. Goes home, tells his mom about what's going on. And uh, yeah, that's what that's what happens there. I don't even. It's this this book gets. Re- this is the point where the book gets a little convoluted and crazy. Okay. Well, because 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 and I because I I know what happens. I didn't read the book, but I know what happens. Well, he gets home and but he sees he sees Keith. He st- he, he let's uh, I'll I'll set it up for you. He yeah. starts waking up. He starts to wake. He begins to wake up. Uh, and he sees Keith in his room. Uh, and I th- I believe. Uh, Do we get a description of Keith? Because that yes, really, yes, that was really, I was really curious about this. Long dark hair, dark eyes, and a serious look upon his face, wearing a flannel shirt and black jeans. So he's a little, oh, so he's like he's he's grungy. Like, he's like Adam Driver. Yeah, he's like a grungy like Adam Driver. He's dark sided <laughs> Kurt Cobain. Yeah, dark. Yeah, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's bizarro Kurt Cobain. So oh, he's, my God. he's sitting on his on his his bed scary because this boy just told marco that he lives in his basement he tells him again I, you're gonna do you're gonna you're, you will take care of me marco you will i i will i i have a list of demands and i'm going to have you do them and then marco locks keith in his room tries to get his mom tells his mom there's a boy in his room they go upstairs mark of course marco is wrong keith is gone his mom says you're going to the doctor so they go to the doctor <laughs> That's a fair uh, answer too. Yeah, this, his mom's doing the right thing, and she takes him to the doctor. A a, a one Doctor Bailey, Doctor Bailey. Point out. Yes, yes, and he's Doctor Bailey's got the most ninety description. He's wearing like a green suit and a bow tie. It's all kinds of crazy, wacky colors. Uh, this book is very color heavy. A lot of color symbolism in this book, guys. Mm. Uh, there's a girl who's been hiccuping for ten days. Again, we're getting a little lynchy in there. I can I can hear the uh the white noise. In, of of some sort of like you know like air purifier probably inside of the room that like Marco can't t- like take his mind off he's like fixated on it and this girl mm-hmm. is like hiccuping every two seconds in this room and his oh, mom also if I may just add on to uh, well, this this is an important detail any person who says they can't stop hiccuping is a goddamn liar yeah you it's a mental block and you you're just too weak to stop hiccuping yes it totally wow. will. sorry yeah do you yeah, know that's, that's do, you, do you know that's all illness. Oh yeah, you can think away. People, you just have to think it away. <laughs> <laughs> but Marco can. He got hit in the noggin. No, his thinker is, is broken, and that's why he can't get rid of his illness. He has the only legitimate illness, which is a bad thinker. Uh, bad brain. A bad brain. Uh, he he. The, the hiccup girl's there. His mom's saying her crazy shit that she says. You know, it's getting crazier and crazier as the day goes on. Is it Marco? We got to get Marianne in there. Marianne Williamson. We got to vote her in. <laughs> This uh, is this is all happening. They go back to talk to the doctor. The doctor says, "Oh, you don't remember, you know, being in the hospital. You don't remember this. Oh, you know what? The only way to to solve this, Marco, is for me to take your brain out." And Marco's like, "You're not <laughs> removing my brain." And he's like, and his, "And his mom agrees." Yeah, I think Doctor Bailey's got to take your brain out. Marco's like, "Surely they jest. Surely ye jest, 
doc, dear doctor. No, no. Dr. Bailey truly wants to remove his brain and says, we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to remove your brain. They go home. Mom's saying, yeah, we'll come back tomorrow. We'll remove your brain. He is, goes is home. It exactly. It's specifically taking the brain out. It's not, we're going to open it up and poke around he your says, brain. We're going to take your brain he out. Specific, Dr. Bailey says it's easy. I'll just cut your brain, your head open, brain slips right out. <laughs> I'll just I'll just snip at the stem right there. Just yeah. cut it out. It just comes just out. Give just give the old uh, the old skull a little, little knock of a, t- of a hammer and it uh, comes undone, you know? It just comes right it just, off. It it's like just a, falls right out. It's like a soft-boiled egg. You eat a little tap with the spoon. Crack it open, <laughs> dig the brain out. Super easy. That would be really helpful if God made some freaking operating parts on our body so we could take them apart that yeah, way. Yeah, you know, Don, that's a great huh. point. Healthcare, we keep blaming it on big business, but I think it's God's fault for not making our bo- bodies easier to work on. And not making our bodies invincible. You had your chance, RL. God. Well, I, I, think, invincible, <laughs> I, think, I think invincible is a good point, Dom. I'm, I'm down what you. What I thought you were pitching of like, we have removable segments and stuff. We're like, ah, my left arm just kind of sucks, and you can just kind of pop it off. Pop a robot a- one on there with a buzzsaw. Yeah, a robot yeah. one on, or trade someone else an arm for another part of their arm. It's action figures, right? It's a swap swap the part out of your G.I. Joe and put them on a Master Blaster. Yeah, man, give me my flintlock arm. That's what I want. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so they're they're gonna open up Marco's brain the next day. Yeah. Well, he, that's what's funny. That's just funny about this book is that she's so protective of Marco. And the second a doctor is like, "We got to take his brain out," and she goes, "Tomorrow we will be here." <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. I want to see what my boy's brain looks like. That sounds great. <laughs> so he goes home. They're gonna cut his brain out tomorrow. He does homework. He's writing his essays, pretending to be his dog, Gwynny. Our friend Gwynny, the woman who destroyed his brain and smacked him in the head with a hat, with a with a bat, uh, it shows up while he's writing in his room on his on his computer. This is a fever dream, guys. Covers his eyes and surprises him, and he goes, "Oh, but I know. I oh, people always sneak into my room. I'm not scared of you doing that." Uh, and she does it right after Keith's face appears. Again, another moment of terrifying imagery. Keith's face appears on the computer screen as he's typing his homework. Hmm. And scares the living shit out of Marco. He pisses his pants now, in this. Now, book. when you read that his face appears on the screen, are you picturing like a JPEG or like ASCII art of Keith of of Keith's face? I Chad, I'm I'm happy that you asked that question because I had the same question. I mean, what do you guys imagine? What do you think instantly? Um, I think I think I think like a sparkle GIF. Okay, yeah, like, like a, a sparkle like a, GIF, probably something like that. Like a 1996, like or not? Sorry, like a 98, like uh, GeoCities GIF. Sparkle gift. Yeah, put it on put it on your MySpace page right above your top mm, eight. Like, okay, just kind of a, a sparkle gift of keep going like basement <laughs> demands basement. <laughs> I am imagining like a early um the 3D art of Keith's head spinning, and then underneath it said uh, "Welcome to my webpage." Okay, like lawnmower man. Okay, lawnmower man style. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. cool. nice. You guys Great. ever okay. watched this? The uh, we watched it last night. You ever watched the uh, the video, uh, the Peter Gabriel video for Steam? No. Uh, I was going to say Sledgehammer, yes. Steam, well, no. so, he, so here's the thing. Peter Gabriel's videos, always some uh, achievement in video. I think mm-hmm. there's always something provocative. You have to watch the video for Steam. It is just like a updated version of Sledgehammer where Peter Gabriel is going, hey, y'all, I'm still fucking. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, <laughs> it, the video uses a lot of 3D art, Lawnmower Man shit, and it's actually pretty entertaining to watch. Um, but anyway, fun. just a quick sidebar there. No, that sounds fun, and that's exactly how I imagined it. It's scary. It, it, it's digital scary, digital 90s scary. And it, it gets him. But then Gwynny shows up, scares him in real life, and then Dom, he tells her about Keith. She doesn't believe him. The, computer, the computer's not even on. His brain's not working, guys. Mm. His brain's not working right. He says, I will take you to the basement. I will show you Keith. I will show him to your face. He goes downstairs with the her. first time going into the basement at this For, point. Huh? Well, so the second time going into the, the squirrel, basement, the, the, the squirrel, squirrel in the yeah. basement. But the, but Dom, this is the first time going into the basement, like you said. And and RL writes the shit out of this. He makes it scary. There's windows clattering. There's a dripping faucet. There's dark and 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 sheer shadows across the wall because the one a bunch of the lights are out there's all kinds of scary shit going on his brain's not working well Gwynny's behind him she's she's egging him on saying she doesn't believe him he's looking everywhere for stuff nothing no keith no keith anywhere hmm. but when he turns to Gwynny and she says hey he's not here she then says that he's just trying to scare her but she 
cannot be scared by him because look at this. I can do something truly scary. And then she opens her mouth and it continues to open beyond impossible limitations of human cool. biology. And her insides cool. begin to pour out of her mouth and envelop her body <laughs> in a pink slime with her organs, her lungs, her stomach, her heart beating off of the per the pink slime pouring from her, her from her gaping maw. One of the most horrific images in any Goosebumps book of, yeah, any, of holy all shit. time. And it, you know, I, Paul, just the way you're talking about it here, I think you need to do a dramatic reading. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of do you want me to read? You want to read the passage? All right. All right. I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. Let me get to it. Let me. Get uh, to you it. a dramatic reading, okay? But, uh, ladies dramatic. and gentlemen, you may know Paul Ritchie I'm not gonna, as I'm not the podcaster. Do. You may know him as the commentator, the entertainer. You, what you don't know about Paul is that Paul is also the actor. Oh. Paul has yeah. all types of abilities, and he's about to act out this dramatic mm -hmm. reading mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the Inside Out girl. Yes, let me find it. It's going to be tough. Okay, all right. So, Kevin, you're going to have to cut out me finding this stuff. I don't know. Uh, why don't you? Yeah, Kevin, why don't you just put in some uh, some theater music? Yeah, <laughs> some, Kevin, some... can you put in some some audio equivalent of smoke? He was yes. like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get it? Get a fog machine uh, spraying the the. Tss, tss. Then when you know more fog is coming, yeah, that's the yeah, that's yeah, yeah. The little, the little, the little pss as the as it sends it out, it kind of ruins it every time. Yeah, do that. All right, you guys ready for this? You guys ready? Mm-hmm. I'll show you something, Gwenny said. She placed both hands on the wooden banister and then she opened her mouth wide, wider. Her mouth stretched open, wider, wider. <laughs> 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 you guys like this acting? Until the rest I of love her this. Face, this is good. Until the rest of her face disappeared behind her open mouth. Her tongue plopped heavily over her chin. And then something pink began to pour out. Something pink and glistening, wet, rolled out from the gaping mouth. More, more, swelling as it poured out. At first, I thought she had a big gob of bubble gum in there. But as the pink <laughs> gunk flowed up from her throat, the mouth pulled open even further further and her head disappeared behind it and i realized i realized i realized i wasn't staring at bubble gum i was staring <laughs> at twinnies insides i no, saw no, 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 no 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 i saw yellow organs clinging to the glistening pink flesh something long and gray twisted out of her mouth wrapped around itself dark purple lungs slid over the drooping tongue and then her red heart so red so startlingly red plopped from her open mouth throbbing throbbing steadily throbbing Ooh. wetly Oh, <laughs> I uttered a long moan of horror. <laughs> that, my friends, is some of the scariest imagery in any RL book. Uh, yeah. I, okay, dude. Okay, here it is, okay. y'all. You okay. have all of the samples. You have all the clips. Make <laughs> the samples. Chad, I've, just at the end of that reading, we needed Chad's clip, which was... Chad, do you remember what your clip was? Uh, we are at uh, max, uh, what is it? We are at max critical overload. Yeah, that was perfect. That's perfect for that scene. So, okay. <laughs> Mix it up, y'all. You, if you're a musician, if you aspire to be a musician, here's your opportunity. We will play them. We will play them on the we next will, one. We will do it on the next one. We will play some hot hot hits that we get. Uh, we are setting ourselves up for audio silence. No responses. I can't No, worry. it's coming in. We have very talented and special and beautiful people who listen to this we show. Do. We do. I agree. So, this, show isn't, this show doesn't just have beautiful people on it. It's got beautiful people who listen to it. Uh -huh. Oh, mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Paul, this girl's insides are spilling out. Yeah. Um, Silent Hill horror. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's terrifying. I would say beyond. Oh, uh, no. That's pretty good Silent Hill horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is it's, it's Silent Hill, Resident Evil style horror. Terrifying. This is what happens, though. Dom, like you said earlier, this is when he wakes up. This is the first wake up for Marco. He wakes up in the doctor's office. His mother is there by the bed. She says he was hit in the head. Of course, we know about that. But his sister Gwynny shows up. Gwynny was his sister all along. She didn't hit him on the head with the baseball bat. Jeremy, his best friend, who at the beginning convinced him to go play softball against his mother's wishes. He hit him in the head. It's all mixed up. What happened? What? Marco got hit in the head. His whole life is mixed up inside of this this comatose dream, this nightmare, this nightmare scape that he's living in. 
Mar- it, Marco, mm. has, Marco has a sister, Gwenny, and Dr. Bailey shows up. He doesn't look like the Dr. Bailey Dom that you mentioned earlier the, with the crazy 90s colors. No, no, no. He looks like a regular doctor. Which, by the way, I, I just want to call it the part that, that I think is interesting is, is Gwenny says, right, that it was it was Jeremy that did it, right? Jeremy hits you in the head. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and Jeremy, we haven't really talked about him, but he's been like, he he's just like this other friend in the in the show, right? Like the first time Jeremy comes over to visit and they they don't see anyone like in the house, right? And then like he keeps yeah. calling, so he's like he's he's lurking in the background as like a, a minor friend, but hasn't really been important in the book, he's right? The, yeah, he's the requisite RL minor friend that is there to, to make the story move forward, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I would I would say. Yeah, yeah, but I also know it's like Jeremy's never like, like Keith. Doesn't seem to ever interact at the same time uh, as far as the pages I read. Like he doesn't interact with anyone else. So the whole I, I could totally be like, is okay, a, okay, a goddamn ghost, a goddamn ghost boy. That's a good point, Chad. That's a great point. I don't know because you know what, this rabbit hole. We're not done going down this rabbit hole because <laughs> he wakes up in this room and Gwenny's his sister and Jeremy has hit him in the head and everything seems normal and right again, except for the fact that Doctor Doctor Bailey decides that he needs to check Marco's tongue, which he begins to pull out of his mouth like a fruit by the foot. Oh, and he's wheeling it out. He's wheeling it out. And again, we're getting another Lynchian horror moment. We're getting this crazy, surreal moment of this tongue pulling and pulling and pulling it out. Marco can't scream because he for he he must scream, but he has no tongue. Right? <laughs> wow. Well, no, he, he I must scream, but the doctor has but my the tongue. doctor has my tongue, <laughs> and he can't. And he wakes up. He wakes up again. But this time, Doctor Bailey is coming through the door. But this time, Doctor Bailey's a fucking Lynchian giant. Who's like over seven feet tall? <laughs> what? What's happening? I, this is the real book, guys. This is the real book, and really, what happens? I'm fucking so sad that neither of you read this because it's insane. This book is—it's insane. kind of perfect. It's kind of perfect that we didn't read it because it feels like you're the one who got hit in the head, Paul. right? I right. You're like this book happened. I swear this book happened. And Chad, yeah. And what I if we like, read this what? book afterwards and none of this happens? It's about just like a mold monster in a basement. Chad, that you he's just, trying to get rid Chad, of. Chad, you just gave me the chills. You just gave me the real chills because I read this book and now my mind is all fucked up. I'm. I got steined. Steined me. He steined me. <laughs> oh, he wakes up to, to the new giant Doctor Bailey coming into the room and he hands him a letter from Keith and it says something about coming back to. Please come home. You need to take care of me. Please come home. Marco comes in, or Marco's mom comes back. Gwenny comes back there, and they and he and he goes, "I'll show you the letter. I'll show you the letter." Can't find the letter. There's no letter around. And then mm. Doctor Bailey comes back in. Giant Doctor Bailey comes back in. I never gave you a letter, you crazy piece of shit. And then they send him home. <laughs> <laughs> then they send him home. He goes to home, goes to go to sleep, and then he sees Keith. Keith is back. Keith is coming towards him, and he's telling him, "I'm going to make you take care of me, Marco." You will take care of me. I have all the power here. I am the one in power. Wow. And and like like any good boy would do, Marco takes a paperweight from his desk and murders Keith. He <laughs> what? He what? He hits Keith in the head and Keith falls to the ground dead. Dead <laughs> weight. <laughs> what Wait. is the paperweight? It's the paperweight that that uh I think Gwynnie gave to him maybe. Yeah, it's like a Six Flags paperweight of the dancing Six Flags man. Yeah. In a, in <laughs> yes, a snow- yes. He smacks him <laughs> on the head and commits cold-blooded murder upon Keith. And then Keith's body morphs into a yellow blob. And it oh, begin- like the cover. Like the cover. We're finally at the cover, guys. And the- and it begins to wrap around his body and suck him inside of it. And he gets to- he starts to become the blobbed by it. What? He falls Wait, down okay, the stairs. Hold. He falls down the stairs. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll hold. I'll hold. Well, I'm just curious at this point. When, when Keith when Keith is like, I I am going to absorb you or whatever, is he like... He's a normal human. He's a normal human, yeah. I guess, even though he turns into to goo. Does he explain why he's on... Was in the computer or anything? No, he's just telling... Like I said, man, he's just telling him that he's got all the power here. He's in control. That's I all I mean, the, okay. the, the reality is, is that uh, Marco is just, uh, you know irresponsible with his responsibilities. I mean, mm, he, mm-hmm. Keith is just asking him to take care of him or yes. maybe not asking, maybe telling, but like, come on, Marco, Keith, Keith, Keith needs some help. Dom, Dom, this is a good point. Cause I was trying to figure out what this book was about. Marco has a dog in this book that he does not take care of. He does not care about <laughs> or love <laughs> as he should. At one point he scares the dog and tells it to leave. And his mom gets mad at him because he does not care about that dog. Like he should. And I think Keith, is a subconscious manifestation of his dog telling him, you're being a real dick human to me, Marco. 
You're not a good oh, human. Oh, that's so sad. And then he turns into dog throw up. And then he turns into dog throw up and tries to suffocate <laughs> Marco with it. Marco gets suffocated by the blob and he's falling down the stairs. Luckily, the blob is fully wrapped around him, creating a cushion of almost bubble wrap that keeps him safe as he falls down. Sure. The stairs. It, it, sure. In the blob's defense, Marco started it. Yes, absolutely. Marco murdered the blob yeah. to start it. He falls yeah, down yeah, the yeah, stairs yeah. and then his mom wakes him up and he finds out that. He's in his room, and Keith was never suffocating him as a blob, and he he it was all a dream. But then Keith shows back up again and tells him that it's that he's that he's that he's real and that he's going to make him take care of him. Marco gives up. He surrenders. He says, "I'm done." And then Keith wakes up. Everybody, Keith wakes up, and his mom is Shut telling him, "Up." Keith has been having a dream, and his mom tells him, "Keith." You were not, you weren't, you weren't Marco. You're Keith. You're the monster that lives in Marco's basement. And you went what? out and played baseball and pretended to be a little boy and got hit in the head with a baseball bat. But what? that, you got what you deserved. You played baseball with the kids. And as I always warned you, because I always warn you about all the things that'll happen to you, you got hit in the head with the baseball bat and now you're fucked up. And the, mo- and the humans could have found you. The humans could have figured out that you're a monster. Well, like, that's the big reveal, it, it's one of those things where you turn around so many times that you're just facing the front again, mm-hmm. and yes, uh, yeah. you're just like, what? <laughs> you know, like, this didn't have an effect on me because all of the previous turns are kind of, like, more ridiculous. There's no base. And, there's no base to, like, know what is reality, right? Yeah. Like, there's just no reality throughout this whole book. There's just It just is a constant flipping of, of realities. And that is why... It's not a good book in the sense that, like, it doesn't ultimately satisfy, but it has the scariest, weirdest shit. And for that reason, it's a good... That is why it's a good book. That is the only reason it's good, is because of the it, weirdness. It, it, I, I'm really curious if we have any listeners... It's not done, by the read... way. There's one more thing, and I will read it to you when you're done. Oh, please. No, yeah. No, oh, please. okay. But no, go ahead, Tom. What were you oh, say? I was just going to say, if you read this book growing up, what did you make of it? Let I us know. Love... Shoot us an email at yes. goosebuds at gmail.com. Yes. Because this is so bonkers confusing. I wonder how you reacted as a kid reading it. Okay, I, so. I, I remember I, I must have read it as a kid because I'm pretty sure I read every single Goosebump book and I have no memory of this one. Like this one is just probably was so crazy that it was forgettable. So this is what happens. He finds out that he was a monster, right? And his mom says, look, you can't go play with the kids. And he tells his mom he'll never do it again. And she says, you need your rest. Turn yourself inside out. Is that what, that's what monsters do when they go yeah. to sleep. And he does it. He does the same thing that he saw G- uh, Gwynny do. Keith did it at one point when he turned into the uh, blob that tried to eat him. He does the same exact thing. Turns into the gross thing. But then, guys, I'm going to read. We're going to go back to a dramatic reading. Kevin, smoke, please. <laughs> <laughs> no. A sound on the basement stairs. I glanced up and saw Marco standing there. Did he see me? Chapter 31. Staring hard at the figure on the basement stairs, I quickly sucked up my insides. My heart and veins slid back into my body. Then I swallowed my lungs. Did Marco see me? Yes. His eyes bulged with shock. His mouth hung open. A wave of panic swept over me. A chill ran down my back. This is our worst nightmare, I thought. I've been caught. I've been seen by a human. Now what? I stared back at Marco and waited for him to speak. (laughs) It took him a long time. He gripped the banister and held onto it tightly. He squinted across the gray basement at me, squinted as hard as if he didn't believe what he was seeing. Who are you? He asked finally in a small, frightened voice. I swallowed hard. What would I say? How should I answer? I had to think fast. Who are you? He repeated a little louder, a little stronger. (laughs) Uh, You're dreaming. I called to him. He squinted hard and squinted harder at me. Go back upstairs, I told him. It's just a dream. Would he believe me? End of book. That's the Uh, end of the book, guys. That's the end of the fucking book. What? Okay. Uh, What? Okay, so so Marco never had encountered the monsters until the very end. Yeah. And all of Keith the monster's fears of being discovered encouraged him to lie about a very weird pretend like you're asleep thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's what? what I do when I'm in someone's house <laughs> un- un- unannounced. They're like, who are you? And be like, who are you? I live here. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is a fucking dream. That's what I say to them. Uh, you're dreaming, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hit them with the back of the head, 
Yeah. Then, yeah, then it's fine. Then, then the lie will take. Yes. Guys, I'm so fucking sad that you didn't read this book. I'm so uh, fucking sad. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just sad because, Jesus Christ, this was the thing. This it, was an insane it's so, thing. Yeah, it's, it definitely sounds like twists for the sake of twists. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to think about all the previous dream visions within the context of, uh, you know, just like their Keith's dreams instead, where it's uh, like, I guess the dream in that way is all about Keith worried he's going to be discovered. Uh-huh. Uh, and then he doesn't. So they're almost like, whew, that was a close one. Uh, but then I'm fine. But it, it, yeah, it's. I was trying to think, but, like, it was the mom's warnings. Were they all, like, references to stuff that happens with the monster? You know, like, your tongue, skin's going to fall off. You can't eat eggs because your body can't digest them. Is it, like, a monster thing? Like, what's going on? Like, because they're weird. Uh, they're fucking weird. Yeah, well, weird. the eggs is, like, kind of visual for what the blob kind of turns into in a yeah, way. So yeah. it's, like, everything's kind of layered in reference to further events or events that will happen later. And... Uh, yeah, it kind of just, it sounds like it creates this kind of layered dream goo. It kind of sounds like the entire story is just this goo that by the end of it, you yeah. know. This might be the most postmodern Goosebumps book that that, that exists. <laughs> uh, it's fascinating. Well, here, here's one thing I wanted to add on to it of uh, going through the trivia for this book. Uh, the actual article is hidden by a paywall that I can't access. Uh, uh -huh. But in the Santa Ana Orange County uh, Register back mm -hmm. in June 1996, uh -huh. uh, in an interview with R.L. Stein, in the interview, Stein mentions a new book title that he'd recently conceived. Okay. This is, 19, this is 1996, by the way. Yes. Book came out in 1997. So a new book title he'd recently conceived called I Live in Your Basement. After revealing the title, Stein admits he didn't yet know what the book would be about. That sounds about well. That's right. the thing. In every interview with R.L. Stein, he only ever talks about coming up with the titles, right? So, I'm I, I'm just saying it adds a lot of credence to a previous theory that I'm pretty sure we talked about on here, where in in the 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 possible workflow of a Goosebumps book is R.L. comes out with a title, mm -hmm. the amazing Tim Jacobus makes a cover based off it, okay? Because it is he's amazing. By the way, this is a great cover. Just like this the, is one of the best the, covers, yeah. The yellow, it's just a yellow goop coming out of a laundry machine screaming with an awesome, like, snake tongue. It looks cool. Yeah. And I, I would be surprised if that was the art. And then RL's like, okay, well, I was thinking more about a, a boy who lives in the basement. But you know what? I can make this work. Like, I think he just, like, uh -huh. writes around the art. Uh-huh. I would not be surprised. Because this, this was, like I said at the beginning, this was seat of the pants storytelling by RL. Like, it was just, like, twist, turns, 90-degree turn. Flip it a back around. Flip it back around. Okay, we're back now. We're okay. another, now we're another character. <laughs> now this character uh, knows that character and is that character's sister. It, insane, completely insane. Wow. Uh, yeah. Holy shit. I mean, it's funny you say like you feel the scenarius on it. It does feel a little bit like it could be. I'm I'm running out of pages and uh, I really gotta get this done. I got uh, and you just just you just veer the story wherever you need to go for to hit your page yeah. count. Or or he was having the most fun with it and doing whatever the hell he wanted yeah. to do, which could also maybe be his it. carte blanche. Yeah, because this like I like I said, scariest imagery, and you heard some of it in a dramatic reading. You did a great yeah, job. Yeah, you Paul. did a really good job oh, of painting welcome. the picture here you're for us. You're welcome that I was uh, that I was able to give you that beautiful reading. <laughs> uh, oh, I have nothing else to say about this book. Although I'm just really genuinely stunned by it. You know, this is one of the few uh, books that we could not make any changes to to fix. I don't think. Well, yeah, I'm. I, you say that I'm going to pitch one change mm -hmm. based on okay. the you know the three chapters again. Very sorry, RL. Mm -hmm. I pray for penance. Um, uh, but the first the three chapters I read and, and you describing it, I, I'm going to pitch this different ending, right? The okay. first part of the book still happens as is, right? And and, and Marco is the main character. Mm -hmm. Marco gets home from, from school before his mom gets home. And he does go straight into the basement to J.O., yes, right? Yes, sure, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's where, the, like, the J.C. Penny catalogs he hides are are down there. Uh-huh, and it's right. And, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the and then the first couple chapters still play as is of like Mister X and like okay he jo's yeah he, he doesn't have he doesn't have a he doesn't have a jo pillow to land on he hits his head no he does not have a jo pillow or a jo sock if, guys if you're if your jo liquids don't hit a pillow they die immediately 
Well, and see, it, that's what, this is what I'm proposing. You need is, your you need, is, look, and this is an, a, a, a device that I invented called the Jillo, uh, which is, <laughs> is it's for when you are Jo and and you know you're gonna pass out afterwards because it's gonna be so good and you're gonna be so so relaxed afterwards. You need a Jillo to safely to safely Jo and not fall over and give yourself a concussion. Are are you proposing a a, a, a pillow to Jo? into and then no 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 sleep on no 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 you do they're not to be mixed you need a pillow for your jo and you need another pillow your jillo to fall asleep okay two pillows Mm -hmm. and but here's my they should be identical they should be identical pillows well yeah that's you know and you're right because that's if you're if you're old enough and responsible enough to jo you better be responsible enough to keep your jillo separate you know and and (laughs) and you want to be discreet you like the flashlight and people will see the flashlight and they're like oh just a flashlight Right, right, exactly. Like you'll see two pillows. <laughs> yeah. You see two pillows on a on a couch. You're like, oh, those are just two end pillows. Wait, real quick, do you guys side tangent? Do you guys ever think at any point in someone's house in America, uh, the power went out and uh, and someone's <laughs> like, I'll, I'll run to the 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 cupboard and get the flashlights, <laughs> and then they pulled out their dad's uh, flashlight that they didn't know about, and the dad had to like go like, I don't know what that is. That flashlight's not working at all. Absolutely. Also, I'm gonna go down. To, I'm gonna go down to the basement to make sure all the fuses are working. <laughs> I'll be back in like 20 minutes. <laughs> I'll be like back in three minutes. This flashlight works great. I mean, this flashlight works great. Um, I, I like that the dad hit it in plain sight. He's like, "Where do I put my pussy flashlight?" Um, oh, you know, I'll just put it with the other flashlights. No one will even yeah. notice. It's like it's like a hide a key. You just put it with the rocks among the other rocks, mm-hmm. right? You just yeah. you just put it in there. Mm-hmm. That's the and that's where flashlight. that's actually the best place. To put your key is inside a flashlight outside of outside your house. Among the rock. <laughs> no one's gonna touch that thing or pick it up, so that key is safe. Yeah, no one's gonna steal a flashlight. Uh, we got We got to uh, end it there. I, That's incredible. Well, I want to know. I want to finish. I want to finish the story part of why we talked about Jizzo socks. Oh, Jillos. Yeah, pillows. sorry, Jillos. Jillos. Yeah. Hold on, I nobody brought it, up Jizz socks. Okay. No, I said Jizz <laughs> socks. You. Uh, cause, cause, cause Blink-182 mentions it in one of their songs. And I was like, oh, just socks. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so I say that the boy goes down there, Mark goes down there. He J.O.'s. He doesn't have a Jillo. Cause yep. he hasn't been invented yet. He just, he just has a concussion. Falls back. He has, has a concussion. A concussion. So uh, not to be too gross. I think he just kind of fires wildly like under the desk or something. Right. He's okay. a fucking monster. Creates then, new life. And, yeah, he creates new life without knowing it, and then Keith is the the jizz monster that has lived. Maybe it, it landed in some baking soda or like some Tide detergent, and it became a living thing. And he's like, "You gotta take care of me. I'm he's the you, dark. I'm your son." Oh my god, this book is oh about gosh. this book is about having a child before when you're when you're in your teen your teen years. Yeah, and he can't tell his parents about it because he had to admit that he jailed in the in the basement, oh right? My like he, God. There there was yeah. a there was an afterword that was cut by Parachute Press where RL <laughs> said, Now we call it Jizz, which is a real funny name, but the reality <laughs> is it's a magical <laughs> liquid that can make a baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny to talk about cum and jizz, but <laughs> let's bet, let's get real for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fun time today. Well, let's talk about jizz. Jizz <laughs> is dangerous. It could make babies wherever. Be careful where you put it. They will control your life. Jizz in the basement <laughs> enough, and you're going to go through what Marco went through. Thanks a lot for reading my books. I'm R.L. Stein. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, I think I think you're right though, Paul. This is that's a pretty good I, end of I an episode. Think, yeah, wasn't this wasn't the flavor text on the uh, cover? Was it wasn't it? Uh, Marco, better come carefully. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's not even a pun. <laughs> it's alliteration, and that was enough oh. for me to say it out loud. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to stop the show and say, guys, listen to me for a second. I figured it out. <laughs> Brain said, "Go talk." I think another cover alt is uh, Marco might throw enough rope to hang himself. That doesn't make what? sense either. I, I retract. <laughs> what? You never heard, what? No. You never heard, you no. never heard throwing ropes? Oh my God, I just term? realized you were you were talking about ropey cone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It took me so long to get to that point. I'm sorry. Yeah, that means it's a deep, uh, it works on multiple levels. This, uh... Chad. I'm so sorry. Chad. I think the flavor text was can Marco come before Keith comes home? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh boy. Uh, this is yeah, what you get been... when we don't read the book. We just devolve into the <laughs> pretty by the end of it, you know. Give us give us an hour, folks. This has been Goosebuds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for thanks for voting on this book. Uh if you'd like to support the show and get the option to vote on which we uh read or talk about next time uh, yeah we'll definitely Patreon. talk com. about it we're de- we're definitely reading the next episode don't worry we're definitely friends. reading the next one you know uh, what this was a solidarity and i'm i appreciate that chad you know expressed his solidarity in my protest of not reading another goosebumps book yes i picked up on the wavelength that we were both gonna be protest boys and make paul do all the i'm work. so sad uh, that you guys did not read this it was i am too the- i am i am really am too in the five years that we've made this show, it was one of the wildest experiences. I feel like I experienced it enough without having to get mad about reading. Because like, that's the thing True. about reading a Goosebumps book. Uh, sometimes you'll be like, oh, I got to talk about that thing. Got to talk about that thing. But for the most part, you're like, where is this going? Um, but it sounds like this book delivered, but then also didn't by keep it kept turning and, and starting over. So This took me for a mad wild nonsensical ride you went on mr uh, toad's wild mr rl's wild ride yeah mr yes. Stein's wild ride which again if you want to if you want to help support the show and choose what we what we read uh weigh in our discussion join our awesome discord group where now people are playing uh like real play board games and like over the internet with each other it's fucking amazing uh it's a beautiful place playing, it's really really cool you can go to patreon.com slash goosebuds and chip in we appreciate all you can also uh if i may just throw out another way to support the show go to your favorite uh podcast app like itunes or stitcher and leave us a review yes reviews are great yeah uh, actually this is a new call for reviews we'll read reviews on the next episode that's great yeah, yeah I mean, let's do it uh yeah if I, side tangent i have some right here if you guys want to read them real quick i have one yeah well sure. freaking a will read a goddamn review yeah, I got one here. It's from Angor, the Soul Incinerator. Scary name. Slink's gone give it to you. Make your day a little spookier by listening to one of the adults from the Peanuts cartoons, a boisterous guffaw <laughs> that became sentient, <laughs> and the inimitable Noctis boy peel apart the many-layered onion of Steinian horror. These wisecracking wisecrackers crack wise about solving the growing population theorize which national tragedies could be exploited to dispose of murder victims and invent newer, edgier Christmas villains, all while analyzing the definitely ghost-written horror phenomenon that only 90s kids remember. Dom, Paul, and Chad are a genuinely fun group to listen to with great chemistry and amusing insights, especially when coupled with intrusive, sassy editing from Kevin. And it's also... Hey-o. Shout out to Kevin. And it's also fun to be able to physically hear the joyful light fading from Dom's eyes for reading <laughs> from reading five years of pointless jump scare prank fakeouts. Good geese, good buds, good times, five out of five dog children. That's a good review. That's, That's a, a good, good review. review. That runs the gamut of our entire five years, that review. I forgot yeah. about. I think it's also interesting that I, I can't tell which of those boys refers to us particularly, and they all kind of apply. You can't. Dom is peanuts. You're the boisterous guffaw, and I'm Noctis boy, which is my name. Uh, this one is longtime goosebud, first time reviewer by R. L. Stein by Este Mana. Ma- Mana. Uh, spook yourself real good with some of the funniest indoor kids on the internet. I just finished my second annual Goosebud Spooktober Scarathon, and every episode from these guys and their guests leaves me cracking up and occasionally letting out a little fear pee. It'll I didn't read Goosebumps as a kid, but they've allowed me to experience the inner workings of RL's mind from the safety of my own phone. The show is a sweet grab bag of everything you could ask for, including calling plans, 9-11 time mm-hmm. jokes, sexual Christmas demons, and so much more. You know, a lot of these reviews have a lot of themes, but yeah, I guess that's the show. Yeah, Our right. show has these mm-hmm. themes. 13 poorly animated <laughs> evil dog guys out of 13. P.S. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for all the work you do. I've been following Dom and Paul for about seven or eight years now and have loved everything you've worked on. Uh, Continue was the first channel I subscribed to. Hope Aww. you can all keep up the amazing work and... No, your fans really appreciate it. That's very sweet. PPS, yes. Paul's Pants, Black 3232, or size 30 Jenkos with a chain wallet. Este Mena, you guessed it. They guessed oh it. Oh, my God. Boom. Which one, which one is, is the Jenkos or the chain the, wallet? It, well, that was 
my prior pair before I got the black 3232 jeans. Esther, send us an email so I can ma- mail you my jeans, I guess. <laughs> yeah, fucking Pulse doesn't got jeans now. Also, prove that you're Esther Mina? I don't know how you do that on oh, iTunes, that's but you're going to need to prove it. Oh, you're going to need frick. to prove it because we can't have yeah. uh, 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 imposters taking these pants. Yeah, we have to have a serious vetting process here. Mm-hmm. You guessed the pants. It's finally happened. It's finally happened. Wow. Uh I have one uh, from Cooking Lentils that says, hmm. do you think R.L. Stein's favorite superhero is Ghost Rider? Five stars. <laughs> uh, I, I, I I like that joke. I Great. think it's Man Thing because he wrote Man Thing. Uh, uh, this show always makes my day better. These guys are hilarious and have great chemistry. I have never read a Goosebumps book, but this show is as enjoyable to listen to as a Mickle pullover is to wear. Oh, oh. Still waiting on that Fear P series. Oh, yeah, the Fear P series. Once- Fear Street, Fear P. Yeah, Mickle shirts. Uh, Dom, you want to tell people where they can pick up a, a Mickle shirt? Oh, okay. Everybody things. knows. I mean, I'll, I'll let people know again, but it's comfyjunior.com. I do have to say, um, these were all great reviews. Yes. Uh, I thought I saw a review in there that called me a snack. And if more men and women can come on to me through the iTunes reviews, <laughs> that would be great. Go ahead and just leave reviews that are like, I uh, love the show, great laughs, very funny stories. Dom, by the way, you know, and then just, lay the compliments on okay don loves to be horned on he loves Look, to be horned on <laughs> the sensual muppet that you know <laughs> i'm that sensual muppet speaking of you know great apparel stuff we might have something coming down the pipeline very soon for goosebuds fans so uh keep your animated dog eyes on the scanners uh, on the scanners and also follow us on twitter at goosebuds pod we'll probably post updates there especially about things you can clothe on your body mm-hmm do it mm-hmm Hey, this has been a great episode. Uh, I am excited to get back to a, maybe a more lo- somewhat logical story next time, though. I think the show was. I think the show was better that one person read it and read it to the other people. Yeah, I think Paul should just read them every time. Okay. And Dom and I just don't have to read them. Okay. Yeah, and more people should give Chad and I compliments uh, through the iTunes. <laughs> this all sounds fair to me. Mm-hmm. Paul, thanks for taking that burden upon yourself. Uh, you're here. Hey, Got what it. are we going to read next episode? We're just going to read the next one in order, huh? Yeah, we're just going to do I the next so. one. It was voted. It was a very close vote between this one and what's the other one? I found. I think it's called "I Found a Shrunken Head." What do I do with it? That's, I think that's the title. <laughs> I, yeah, it's Should something I, like that. How I yeah. got my shrunken how, head. How I got my shrunken head. Yeah, we'll be reading that. There's one always next some time. fucking bullshit like that. We'll talk about it next time. Though. It's not. <laughs> listen, listen. It's not scary. It has nothing to do with me, so I don't. It's not scary. Okay. Uh, I'll see you guys all next time. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see you soon. By the way, this was a dream. It never happened. See ya. Bye. Oh, you are a monster. This episode of Goose Buds is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon supporters. And hey, we have new friends joining us around the campfire. Hey, what's up? Daja Monet. Hey, Russell Gore. How's it going, baby? I love my friend Creaky Slink. I can always hear him coming. Oh, and what's up, chick? Get in here. I got some s'mores. And of course, we gotta say what's up to all our lifetime Patreon subscribers who will definitely keep subscribing throughout this decade. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Kale Clinton. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan Dive Turkey Kuabara. Thank you, Hollis Hornbeak. Fred Atkins. Nathan Nola's all. David Cron. Mickey C. Michael McDowell. Clayton C. Buddy Morrill. Mike Lanteri. Nick Hinkle. Joshua P. Robertson presents Goosebuds. Cameron Murphy Audio. Jim Greaves. Mel Dipson. Jared Mason. Alec Aid. Natu Pearl Henderson. Joshua Lopez. Zankeith. Afsheen. Danke McStanky. Jennifer Britton. Stephen Ghostkisser Daniels. Victor. Brandon Rowdenbush. Aaron T. Strunk. Dango Twist. Brian Wells. Zentacles. Drew Applegate. Becca McWilliams. Stealth Bates. Joseph Miranda. Jonas Blotterman. Scott Colopy. Robert Moo. Patrick Reynolds. John Keaty. Third Sergio. Jason Crooker. Miguel Pardo. Chad was a football star. Oh, thanks. It's the eggnog dog. <laughs> That's new. 
Chris... new. It's new a little bit past the season, but I still like it. Still new. Still new. Christina Dolan. Clay Castle. Trans rights. Yeah. Calf. Yeah, you're on board. Joe, remember to save early and often. Scott. Matt, the half-court warlock bachelor. Paul Grasso. Walter Fraser. Maddie. Ishak Arafin. Matthew, spooky noises of the unexplained. Taylor Dirks. Reinfected. The Puerto Rican dream. Sniggy Van Peepers. Tyler Penner. Alan Saylor. Sam Hash. James Roy. Mikey Jello. Ryan Melfi. Chosen One. Gregory D. Warren. Jin K. Bradford Coulter. Jonas Engman. Rich Hilborn. Aiden Alexander Diaz. Alistair Perez. Dylan Vaughn. Toothless Barry the Whistler Bostowitz. Trendy Moron. Two in the slink, one also in the slink. <laughs> All three in the slink, then. Scary. Joshua Jacobwitz. Justin Wagman. Ryan Shell. Connor Church. Vincent Modica. Leviathan. Cardboard Walk. Frank N. Stein. Mm, I think you mean Dr. Frank N. Stein. I don't know. Sorry, he wait, might be working on that. He might only have his master's. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Tommy, obligatory holiday name change hoey. Nailed it. Goblin Library. Luke Canoodles. Zambambinos. Rug. Up and champ. Alicia Gray. Anthony Kuwabara. Molicious always makes me think of mole, and I like that. <laughs> Carl Kleinasser. Brock Graham. Yanni Marco. Ah, oh, frick. Fucked it up. I had it. Yanni Markovina. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Bolin. Joe Gorman. Jake Young. Elusive Koala. Where is it? <laughs> Where did he go? Blake Alvarez. Oh, I always get this one. Paul's Christmas sock. Nice. It's his miracle. Bony. Nathan Remick. Brooke X. Jessica Zyball. Boss Skeleton. Christian Vansky Bear. Corey Shelley. Joe. Eric LeBaron. Oh, sorry. For some reason, that was dumb. Okay. Beezus Christ. That was a good read. Divaldi. Brian Hobgood. Low Belly Hate Me. Jeremy Lowe. Zach Connor. Rocky Raccoon. Reed Steubendick. Anxious Serve. Christopher Dunn. Valhalla Black. Joey Evans. Foolish for Deborah. Piss Pussy Gang Gang. <laughs> what? JKH. I, I think you just declared war somehow. Yeah, dumb. that was uh, a, yeah. That was scary that you said that. Jordan Lockwood. Care Wise Gamgee. Patreon Donator Yo. Joe, Spooky Digital Ghost, Tierney. Cameron Hansen. Swag Bumps, Nightmare at Camp Yolo Squire. Oh, I love it. Nice mix Tom Widom. Danger Tits. Look out, folks. Watch out, they're coming for you. <laughs> like Tom Steyer's sweet nipple, they're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom Steyer takes out his nipple in all his commercials. Look Watch. for it. Llama Consultant. Nicholas Johnson. John the Howling Eye Duda. Noah August. General Lee Depressing. Etona Moore. Lord Cornwallis. Goose Time! Goose Time needs to be the new name of this show. Yeah, we're changing it. <laughs> we're changing it. Uh, guys, I gotta re register all the domains. Fine. <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, Spencer Furnace is making dumb names on Patreon. Andrew Jadshausen. Lady Story Weaver. Cardamom Birkin Beanbo. <laughs> Andrew Evans. Yeah, yeah. Elizabeth Steenweg. Ryan Kite. Daddy's Happy Apple Boy. That's maybe my favorite name. <laughs> That's Chad's Car official new nickname. Daddy's Happy, happy Apple <laughs> Daddy Boy. Daddy Happy Boy. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy Apple Boy. Um, Carter Glass. Chase Neiman. Boss Garretson. Dan. Chris Pittman. Just Garrett. Dylan Eads. Yoplin. Lee Wood. Please let me go home. I don't want to read names anymore. It's also in the Tom Steyer. It's also in Tom Steyer's newest commercials. He says that yeah. he, he's forced to read the name of every American in his new ads. Mm -hmm. Guys, you guys are putting references in the Patreon. Page. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> People listen to this. Hey, fellas, we're all smelling real good. Donko eight egg baby. SNES Chalmers or SNES Chalmers depends what generation you're in. Buff cat. Oh, calamity, Carl. Dylan McCann. Sean Minogue. Germ Juice. Jonas N. Boldson. Jacob the Rough-Handed. Alan G. Jassome. Nick Johnson. John Pigeon Hat Barber. 
arachnid delight. Guys, I am delighted to say that we have our probably our most famous supporter, Scotty Pippen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. I don't know. More famous than Stephen Day? Zach Bush. Slink gonna give it to you. This is a cool name. Dak Prinky. I just like it. It mm. works for me. It's like a Star Wars character. Mm-hmm. Kate and Franklin. Whoa, hold on. Two names? I'm, I've reported you to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Chip Handsome. Hold on, now we got a real doctor amongst us. Dr. Worm is here. Oh, I want him to take a look at my butt. R.L. Slink. <laughs> Chad, do you need to go to the, do you need to go to my doctor, my friend? It's... I just think Dr. Worm could do some good work in there. Yeah, you okay. can crawl right up. Okay, yeah. you're right, you're both right. R.L. Slink. Matt McClellan. Jeremy Bowser. J.R. Chip. Plushy pal. Living in a dog dom's nightmare. One, two, three, four. That's a fantasy fiction reference. It's wow. A mud bar. Adam Morocco. Sadie Kitson. Ryan Carroll. Comfy system. I wish R.L. Stein were my dad. I wish R.L. Oh, Stein was he... dead, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Megan McCormick Mason. I'm just saying our podcast might become more valuable. Hood Lemon. I, you know, I, <laughs> Dom, I was going to say... Probably wouldn't change much about our podcast, but you make a good point. Ninja Bread Man. Men. Yeah, people are going to be like, I got to understand the works of RL. Oh, I'll, I'll listen to his, pod- These his podcast. These three men know what they're it talking about. It must be respectable. <laughs> it must be respectable. all of his works and his manifesto, yeah. These guys know Dr. Worm. One of them goes to Dr. Worm, and he goes up their butt. So they're respectable. <laughs> Tanya Turtle. S. Horse McPowers. Wacky username. <laughs> that was a good read for that, Dom. Manuel Aviles. Elliot Thompson the third. Daniel Hirschberger. Got little old moi pretty freaked. Brett. Bad Vibes Jr. And Robert Edward Hodgson Jr. Manuel, if I said your name wrong, let us know so I can say it right next time. I feel like I butchered it. Uh, don't make all. us on The Sims and uh, make us fight each other. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, bye. Love you all. Goodbye. Bye.